Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Brantner Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comic books I've read, the Kickstarters I've backed, the Kickstarters you should know about, and uh, where you can find these comic books. All sorts of fun stuff like that. So what I've got today is Pop Kill 1 and 2, and these are some indie comics I got from Kickstarter. They are... Uh, Let's see, let me start with the credits before I get into the synopsis. So they are, they have story by Jimmy Palmiotti and Dave Johnson, art by Juan Santa Cruz, colors by Brian Reber, and lettering by Sean Cannot. We've got design by John J. Hill, and check that out. I mean, if that's not good design right there, I don't know what is. Editing by Greg Tumbarello and Patrick Wedge and the cover here is by Dave Johnson and variant covers by Amanda Connor and Dave Johnson but I don't have those so these are the standard covers we've got here Ooh, I just lost my notes sorry about that dip out of the screen for a second so uh, yeah and I think the credits that I just read off still stand for the next issue issue two so let me start in by the synopsis here. Um, is that the right word? Yeah, I hope so. Anyway, the story is about uh, a world where there's um, two Siamese twins, and they were separated, and they now own one owns one pop soda pop company, and the other owns a different soda pop company, and they do not like each other in so much that they even. Uh, they even threaten to kill each other, and they're always spying on each other, putting poisons and contaminants in uh, each other's soda formulas, stuff like that. And uh, so the story here is about uh, there's a hitman kind of spy espionage guy, and one main one of the Siamese twins hires him, actually forces him because he owes him a debt of some kind to uh, check out uh, this doctor that is working on a formula that will make soda shelf life last longer over at his arch rivals, the brothers company. And so he wants him to either uh, get the formula from her, have her switch sides and work over at his side, or he just kill her and then she doesn't make the formula. So it's all good stuff. Uh, amazing art, it just pops from the page. <laughs> you like that? And uh, yeah, in fact that's that's why I'm wearing this shirt right now because I'm a, I'm actually a huge fan of Soda Pop. And uh, yeah, and not to mention um, Jimmy Palmiotti here is uh, he's he's uh, he has created or worked on some of the comics um, of Harley Quinn and stuff that I've read and liked. So I thought yeah, when this hit Kickstarter, I thought I'll try it. it. I mean, it looks amazing. These covers are, it's got this weird uh, flatness to it, but then the main characters here are shiny. Like, don't know if that's coming across on the camera, but uh, yeah, these covers are amazing. And the art inside is amazing. I have marked it so that I don't show you any pages that are not clean. But I mean, check that out. It's just the two main characters here are having a dinner together, and it is just so entertaining to read, so well drawn and everything, and like it's just crazy. And then everything goes crazy, and uh, the the dinner night goes to heck, hell, because uh, he's decided that uh, she's too. The other. Rival has decided she's too big of a risk to keep alive because she might switch over to the other side. And yeah, so whoops, wrong side. So yeah, this is crazy good art. I mean, great story. And uh, the Kickstarter for issues three and four, the finale, as it says on the Kickstarter, is going right now um, until December 25th. So you have your chance. You could get one, two, three, and four. From this Kickstarter. I recommend checking that out. Really good stuff and uh, I'm enjoying this story so far and I can't wait to get issues three and four from my Kickstarter and that's 
where we are on uh, Ki Pop Kill. So check out Pop Kill on Kickstarter till December 25th. And now that brings me to, let's see here. That's a blank page. What, what's that doing in there? I will start with the prints. Check these prints out. This print came with the comic I'm about to talk about. Have you guessed who it is yet? Yeah, check out this one. Really cool. It's a rat creature um, kind of thing going on. There's one with a ghost. This story is Miskatonic High, number seven. And uh, as you know, I am a fan of Miskatonic High. Uh, I've been backing them since the beginning and really, really love the stuff they're doing with the the art and the story, the colors. I love how the colors are always uh, these weird neutral grays, kind of dull things. But then you've got these pop pinks and blues in there, and it just it's freaking awesome. Uh, so this story, they go to a town called Innsmouth, and um, these three characters right here. And while they're there, they're um, they run into a lot of stuff. This is a rundown town. Basically, uh, it used to be a big industry of port. Uh, it's on the water. They do shipments and stuff. But things have gone south, and now the town's in ruins. And, uh, yeah, there's even hints at some underwater creatures, kind of a society going on. And they run into some rat people from this city. And so it's all cool stuff. And I really love uh, the uh, the extras at the end, of, behind the scenes in every issue. Um, it's really good stuff how they they come up with um, their inspirations for the story and the layouts and stuff like that. See, there you get a, a peek at all the covers and uh, a little bit of sketching going on. A lot of cool stuff, and there's a thank you page. I don't think I'm on this thank you page. I didn't opt for that tier in the uh, reward system, but I love it though. Uh, a lot of cool people back this, and so yeah, Miskatonic High issue seven is what I read, and Miskatonic High number nine is on the Kickstarter right now. So you could back the issue nine. You could get the trade and all the filler, all the issues up to nine, and uh, it's really cool stuff. I would recommend checking it out. You could probably even get Miskatonic High meets uh, Lovecraft PI. That's a tie-in issue that they were working on a while ago, and yeah, um, yeah, I really liked it, and uh, I can't wait. I I continually keep getting more because. The Kickstarters keep coming, so that's good stuff. Um, yeah, so that's what I've read, and now I'm going to talk about a movie that I watched. Um, usually I don't talk about movies on here, but I'm going to start. So this movie, uh, yeah, I'm one of those guys that I still get uh, the Netflix in the mail. Uh, I've been getting Netflix for as long as there's been a Netflix, I think. And uh, the movie I'm going to talk to you about is called Weathering With You. And this is an anime. It was done last year, 2019. And, and Weathering With You is about a, uh, a runaway goes to Japan. And uh, while he's there, he meets a girl that can... Uh, so it's crazy raining all the time in in this world of Japan and uh, he meets a girl that can make it make the sunshine come out only in that specific area where she is and uh, so they start up a business and they start people start paying them so that they could have a birthday party out in the Sun or a wedding out in the Sun or even a, a sport out in the Sun all sorts of things so yeah, the art on this is insanely amazing, and uh, so if you have uh, Netflix, you could get this disc sent to you. Um, I don't know if you're on the disc plan, but you can always upgrade. 
the voice work on this is it has Lee Pace in it. Um, you may know him as Ronan the Accuser from the Guardians of Galaxy. Remember the dance off. So that guy's in it. Um, a Brandon Ingman, who uh, I don't really know who he is. He's on this doctor show that my wife watches. Um, Amsterdam, New Amsterdam, something like that. And Alison Brie, who, uh, if you know the Lego movies, she was the Unikitty. She gets angry and stuff. And she, so it's got an interesting cast. Not really highly known people, but it's got some people. But this director, um, let's see, this director, um, Mikato Shinkai, is, uh, I got looked, there was some extras on there, bonus material, and it was talking about how he works and stuff like that. It was showing some amazing footage from other shows of his, so I looked him up, threw him onto my uh, Netflix queue, and I can't wait to uh, throw those in. My my kids will really love it. My daughters, Shandy and Kara, really loved watching this, and they Kara wants a copy of this for herself. So I might look for that, um, get it for her for Christmas or something. So, Weathering With You. That was another thing that I reviewed this week. And now that brings me on to uh, my wife and I have been watching The Queen's Gambit. And as you know, The Queen's Gambit is really popular right now. Everybody's talking about it. and. This Anya Taylor-Joy girl was uh, the main character, and she basically at nine years old she becomes an orphan, and at the orphanage uh, she befriends the janitor, and he uh, he's t he's playing chess by himself, and she wants to play, and he says no, and she keeps coming back over and over again, and she figures out how to play it herself by she imagines the chessboard on the uh, ceiling before going to sleep and uh, so she she becomes obsessed with the game he teaches her and uh, eventually she ends up beating him and then uh, he said he brings it up to a high school teacher that runs the chess club and he he shows up and she beats them both at the same time really good really cool stuff really cool story uh, not for kids but um, yeah Queen's Gambit it was really awesome and one of the main reasons I watched it is because uh, this girl is also in the uh, New Mutants movie, which I've been wanting to watch for a long time, because it's been a couple years that it, New Mutants has been done. And they finally, uh, I was finally able to watch it on uh, my Roku through Fandango. And so I, me and the girls, we watched the New Mutants this week, and um, the New Mutants was awesome. Uh, as you know, the New Mutants takes place in the X-Men world universe. And, uh, yeah, this movie, it even had the kid from Stranger Things in it, the uh, photographer kid. And uh, and the girl from uh, Queen's Gambit was in it as magic. I mean, if anything, that that is a great reason to watch this show. Is, uh, all, all these characters, uh, Rain Sinclair, who plays Wolfbane, who is Wolfbane, uh, from the X Factor comics, I'm a huge X Factor fan, and uh, the New Mutants was a cool story I read when I was a kid. So I, it was really fun, um, and I made the my girls are unfamiliar with the comics, so uh, I I'm like, hey, as soon as you think you know what their power is, let me know, and we made a fun little game out of it because I already knew who every character was, and so it was fun seeing them try and guess what their powers are going to be. So yeah, as soon as New Mutants comes out, I'll probably be buying that for uh, my DVD collection. Can't wait to, uh, yeah, and I can't wait to see what Marvel does with the X-Men universe. I'm really crossing my fingers that they make an, uh, an X-Factor or a Multiple Man thing, because Multiple Man is my favorite character. I have yet to see him on the screen done well. Oh yeah, and there's Weathering with you. Um, so... Cool stuff. Three different shows I watched. I'm going to start talking to you about my, the shows I watched. Weathering, wither, weathering with you, The New Mutants, and The Queen's Gambit. So, cool stuff. That's the end of my reviews for now. Now I'm going to get on to...
the mailbox 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 what did I get my mailbox so what I got in my mailbox this week was I got some really cool stuff it came with stickers and buttons I got a temporary tattoo that's reversed though because obviously when you put it on your arm it'll say born hexed which is what this says born hexed cool sticker I can add to my laptop or wallet whatever and I got two cool little buttons of the faces of some witches and the comic is I am hexed one two and three I got so uh, yeah I can't wait to read those I'll throw those into my into my read pile cabinet and they got some really cool artwork wrap around covers check that out good stuff and oh yeah that cover right there so freaking awesome that's issue three and so I am hexed can't wait to read those in my read pile and also in my read pile I got another sticker with some more books this is probably the second maybe someday sticker I've got because it came with uh, deadbeats that I recently got so maybe someday can't re wait to read that and all we ever wanted two trades that are going to be going into my read pile soon so awesome stuff for the read pile a lot of cool stuff going on now we are on to Kickstarters Kickstarters da -da -da -da, indie comics I love Kickstarter comics they are my favorite reads right now obviously you can tell that so I'm going to tell you about a whole bunch of Kickstarter comics. First off, I should bring up. Uh, I should bring up Miskatonic High number nine is on Kickstarter right now, till December seventeenth. And as you know, I just reviewed Miskatonic High seven, so that means eight is in my read pile somewhere. And yeah, Miskatonic High. It's a bunch of kids. They go to this high school, and uh, there's strange things going on. Uh, Miskatonic is a term that comes from the Lovecraft stories, and so there's a lot of Lovecraft involved in uh, what's going on in this little small town where the Miskatonic High is. So check out Miskatonic High on Kickstarter until December 17th. And Pop Kill 3 and 4, the finale, is on Kickstarter until December 25th, Christmas. So treat yourself to a Christmas present, back pop kill, and uh, get one, two, three, and four. Check it out, good stuff, great art, great story. And here's another one. This one's on Kickstarter till December 23rd. It is Lars, The Awkward Yeti, Volume 1. The Awkward Yeti is uh, a comic strip by uh, this doctor named Nick, and uh, he, he these comics deal with anxiety, ADD, depression, all sorts of different stuff. And uh, yeah, he goes through telling you what, uh, just making funny things. It's where the heart and brain comics come from, which I mean, I freaking love those heart and brain. And that sad little colon, or, uh, well, what is he? I can't remember right now. Gallbladder. The sad gallbladder, he gets taken out because he made some stones. And then the the stomach's like, oh, did you hear what happened to the gallbladder? He made stones, so they got rid of him. Really funny stuff. Really funny organ jokes. Anyway, Lars the Awkward Yeti, Volume 1, on Kickstarter until December 23rd. Check that one out. And here's one we call Swaza. It is Snow White and the Zombie Apocalypse. Snow White Zombie Apocalypse is quickly becoming one of my favorite reads. Um... Yeah, let's see. In issues one and two, uh, we meet Snow White and Rapunzel and Prince Charming. And uh, Prince Charming wakes up Snow White by kissing this random unconscious girl that was in a glass coffin in the middle of the forest during a zombie apocalypse. Anyway, in issue two, we meet the Lumberjack and uh, some Cthulhu is invaded this area, so there's some more Lovecraft for you. And, yeah, really cool stuff. Uh, the writer originally wrote it as a play 
And uh, he even did it on stage a couple times, but now he's taking that same script and making a comic book. It's really cool stuff. It's coming out through Scout Comics. Issue 3 is on Kickstarter until December 17th. So check that one out. Really cool stuff. And the crossover division. It's another one about stories becoming real. Um, and when they become real, they send out an agency that's kind of like the S.H.I.E.L.D. That's the crossover division. They show up. They save the day. They deal with things like flying monkeys and uh, Peter Pan or who knows what. I haven't read it yet. But it's 48 pages. It's awesome. It's on Kickstarter until December 11th. The Crossing, number five, is on, Dece on Kickstarter until December 9th. The Crossing, uh, wow, I can't believe there's been five issues. It's such a good story. I'm sure they'll do the trade next. Um, it is a story about a girl that was on the train tracks and got hit by the train, and her ghost has been haunting the uh, engineer. And so this poor guy, he doesn't know what to do. He can't even go back to work because he's still seeing this girl's ghost that he hit. So... Um, yeah, she's continually haunting them. They, he finds a group and they go to meetings about the care, the ghosts that are haunting them. So check that one out, Crossing 5, on Kickstarter till December 9th. And OBS, The Devil Went Down to Georgia, is about an, an occult secret service and uh, it's 32 page one shop and they deal with things kind of uh, like a Hellboy style. They're a team that goes out and they uh, check out the paranormal, solve a mystery, stuff like that. It's on Kickstarter until December 9th. OBS, The Devil Went Down to Georgia. Okay. Murky Waters. And oh yeah, now December 9th, that's coming up. You guys better check these out. Uh, Murky Waters is on Kickstarter until December 9th also. It is a 56 page anthology about. Uh, the strange things that are going on, crossovers between uh, re reality and uh, science fiction, paranormal, and sci-fi, and all that fun stuff. Um, a lot of different creators, different writers, different artists, all making scary stories or edgy paranormal stories, and uh, it looked really cool, so I thought, hey, that's really cool. Oh, shoot, this one ended, so I'll, I won't talk about that one. And um, next up is Like Father, Like Daughter, number seven. And it is on Kickstarter until December 9th. It's a really cool story about a high school girl who, uh, her father is a superhero. And uh, um, it doesn't sound like they have a really good relationship, but she inherited his powers anyway, whether they like each other or not. And uh, so she has the same powers as her dad, the superhero, and this is the story about how she's dealing with that and what she has to deal with, all that fun stuff. So check out Like Father, Like Daughter on Kickstarter till December 9th. And I am hexed. I already talked about that. Cool. So if you have a Kickstarter going right now or will be going in the future and you want me to talk about it on here, shoot me a, a message. Uh, you could email me at peterpanthevampire at yahoo.com or you can uh, hit me up on Facebook or Twitter in the private messages. I'm Rent Narp on all those social medias. I am not on Instagram though. But yeah, send me a message and say, hey, uh, check out my Kickstarter, talk about it on your show, and that's that. I'll do it. Easy peasy, squeeze a lemon. And um, so I'm going to wrap this up now. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for watching Rent Art Studios Comics. Don't forget to message me about your Kickstarters. Don't forget to check out all these kicks, kick starters that I've talked about. And read some cool stuff. Indie, Marvel, DC. It really doesn't matter. But as long as you're supporting the creators, letting them know you love them. I mean, there's a lot of negativity out there on the Twitters and Facebooks. So it doesn't hurt to say, hey man, I liked your book. And it, that always makes someone feel good. So... If you read something you liked, let them know that you liked your their book. Renarp out.